Nafisa Atiku is a lawyer, writer, TEDx speaker, program associate at the Lead Africa, and the founder and Youth Speak. Is that it? Correct? Yes. <laughs> a civic education platform that sensitizes Nigerian youth on critical national issues and through economic empowerment helps them to make a difference in their local community. Thank you so much for joining us. We didn't tell our guests. Remember, you can actually join the conversation. Tweet to yeah. us at Plus TV Africa or at Waze Show Africa One with the hashtag Waze. Or you can send an SMS to 081 8038 Thank you mm. once again for joining us. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for having me. I think I should take the floor. Oh. So when, when Uwa said Nafisa, a Nafisa article was coming on the show, I was like, the same article, article, article. And she's like, yes, I'm sure you get that a lot, um, the big name. Did it in any way influence your going into politics? I mean, yeah, I get that a lot. Mm -hmm. But to be honest, I think this is something that personally I was born to do. Okay. You can literally <laughs> chalk it up to jeans or whatever. But I remember being like in secondary school and, you know, you had to choose between the science and the arts and the commercial. And in that kind of situation or scenario, rather, my father's name wasn't like a big deal mm. to to me and my brain will literally come alive whenever it was government or whether it was CRK or something. Just basically it will lit up whenever it was arts. So, you know, it's mm -hmm. something, that's where my passion is, that's where my purpose is, that's what I love doing. So, no, this has nothing to do with the family. Okay. Mm. This is just me being myself. So you right. heard, the, so, you heard the, oh, sorry, Sazi, <laughs> you want to go? Yeah, I wanted I to, because um, I read that you're also uh, an, an author and yes. you have this book, Girls Just, you want, just to want to Run. run. So the question is, we're discussing youth in politics mm -hmm. and um, I know because of your books, you, your book, you must have gotten this question a lot, but I'd like to ask you, is it true that women are really disadvantaged in politics as per accumulating leadership experience? Well, yes, I do think that women are at a disadvantage in politics, and not just women in general, but more specifically young women. If we come mm -hmm. to, you know, part of the issues, most of the issues that young people deal with in politics are also affecting women at a very huge level, and even more so, because when you when you think about culture on its own, it's a massive, big mountain that you don't even know where to start from, you don't know where to advocate. And I always keep on telling people, you know, this question keeps on coming up at every speaking engagement that I go to. Like, you know, they ask you, what are the obstacles not allowed? young women women to take part in politics and I'm like you know culture is a really big really really big thing and the truth is that people make up culture and then what makes up the people that you know their mindsets their paradigms that oh this is not just you know what a woman should be doing what a young take friends look at me Really, just just look at me. I'm I'm 26, and you know every meeting or place that we go to, or any speaking engagement about politics, I'm literally the only lady there. Young and lady, yeah, you are even the youngest. Even if even mm -hmm. if you have women there, they are really really old. Yes, you know, and um, but you heard the conversation because you were in the studio. Yeah. What are your thoughts when it comes to youth engagement in politics? Well. I heard that discussion, very interesting discussion. <laughs> and I'm going to attack it from a different angle, to be honest. And I'm going to talk about Vutha Apati. You know, I went to my secondary school this week. I was honored to give a keynote speech to the students about um, human rights on the International Human Rights Day. And it was a very interesting experience for me because I really wanted, you know, part of my passion is also working with young people, the younger, younger ones, mm -hmm. not necessarily those that are within my age bracket. And I said, yeah, I haven't been to a school or anything in a while. So this would be an interesting way to see how people actually receive, young people receive the message of be involved. Leadership. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Leadership, be involved. Especially politics. Not just even being, because they can be involved in literally anything. But, but politics. But politics on They run its away, own. they shy away from that. Exactly. Or they are not just interested. interested because yeah. it doesn't appeal to them in any way. We haven't even preached it to them in a way that it should be appealing. So I go there, I talk about it. And you know, we have like the junior school down to the SS3 school. And then when I ask questions, when I talk about things, and then I see the younger junior students listen mm -hmm. to me more accurately because they are more, how I put it, they're still malleable. They, yes, they're still malleable. They are still, you can really influence because, yeah, them influence because them. they are building up their psyche. They are building up their internal culture, mm -hmm. which in turn now influences the larger culture. But moving over, in fact, the boys were even better. I might add, even in buying my books, the guys have been buying my books, not the women. You know, they are like a really important factor in preaching this whole gender equality thing. Because to be honest, we can't do it without them. 
that's honest but back to my practical um, situation mm. but going over to the senior sense the boys were even more receptive they will sometimes joke because after all it's not even you see a small lady that looks like she, she can be your classmate and she's fine and she's talking so mm -hmm. they will joke sometimes but at least they kind of get and the message yeah. but, but the, the girls, ladies yeah. in the senior secondary no 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 Wow. No, there is a because the younger ones. They so, were what do you think would have caused this? Because I hear mm -hmm. you loud and clear, and yeah. I, I understand that a lot of people are not interested. Trust mm -hmm. me, I wasn't even interested in what a what, lot of women. A lot of women. Mm -hmm. I wasn't even interested in what was happening in the news and mm -hmm. all of those things until growing I was, up, right? Yeah, yeah. until I was forced. Because my parents, I remember when it was nine o'clock, I would go go again. Oh no! And that NTA song, mm -hmm. it used to irk my. Spirit. A lot of us hated you know? the NTA well, news. Guess what? Then. Because we were now forced, Sandy and I were forced mm -hmm. to join a, a, a breakfast show where yeah. we needed to read mm -hmm. the newspapers. Mm -hmm. Then when I started picking up the news, the dailies to read, I realized that there is a lot of things going mm -hmm. on and I actually have a strong voice. Yeah. So vacuum. why can't I lend my voice? Mm -hmm. So what do you think the problem is? You know, foundationally, mm -hmm. I understand this thing mm -hmm. because we're talking, this is an age where mm -hmm. social media mm -hmm. is influencing a lot of things. Mm -hmm. And people are looking away from because if we start, for instance, Mori does skits on yes, I'm a huge on fan. social media. I'm a huge fan as well. You know, <laughs> we're just we're, you know she does skits. So what if she starts to do something that is in line with politics in a funny way? What do you think would happen? So how do you think we can begin to en engage and correct that 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 um, notion? That, that no, not even it's not a notion. It's actually a reality. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. People are not just interested when it mm -hmm. comes to because they just feel like you know women. what there are some especially women mm -hmm. but generally young ch children are not interested they just feel like there are some people there they will handle it mm -hmm. so, and and that is where our problem is mm -hmm. you know so how do you think we can engage the youth okay. how do we start to correct that okay well, <laughs> first of all if you want to do any skits please call me <laughs> <laughs> and then um, three things basically. Um, when I was doing my NYSC, that's when NUTS basically started going around secondary schools talking to young students, male and female, about not even just gender equality in itself, but mm -hmm. politics as a whole and in sustainable governance. Now, there is something, I will always say this, I, I am of the opinion that political education, civic education is more important than the normal education we receive in schools. And at this point in time, we currently do not have any civic education or political education in, ingrained in our syllabus. Take, for example, you see the American society, you know how it's drummed into them that America is the greatest nation on the earth, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. you, are, you need to be proud to, be, to belong to this country and everything. This is, they have um, sessions where they act out things that have happened in their history and their culture. So, and that's like literally kindergarten when you're in grade school. We don't have that. There is no pride at Attached to our nation. We, mm. They don't understand the struggles and the things that we are dealing with as a country, as a nation. So they are ill prepared. It's not a reality that is fed or given to them at an impressionable age. Because if it is, they grow up being aware. They grow up understanding certain things and they know how to take their place in the real world. They don't have that. That's one thing. Now, breaking it down to like, this, no, sorry, second thing. Another thing I always say when I happen to have speaking engagement is that one thing we don't want to address is the fact that when you see, okay, now we have a situation whereby the older generation is really not concerned in politics and to take them a long time. What exactly are they interested in? Pop culture. Why can we not mix pop culture with, with politics? Exactly, with politics. We break it down to their level, speak the language that they speak. No, wrap that panel door inside Eba and feed it to them. You know, what I mean? that's it. You know, that's the nice point. One. And then to the older generation, because they've grown up with this mindset that it's not, it's not something. It's not the, when somebody says, "What do you want to be in future?" Politician going running for office, public servant. It's not something that comes to the top of their mind. To be honest, even me, sir, it did not. I just knew that from secondary school that this was somewhere a space where I wanted to be, but I wasn't exactly sure how what I would be in that. Space. Okay, so what does the average person needs to do to get into politics? Say, if I want to be a politician, mm -hmm. for instance, mm -hmm. I want to run for office, mm -hmm. I don't know what to do, I don't know where to go, I just, I'm just lost. Okay, yeah. for the first thing, I think the first thing you need to do is identify your ideology. It's also in my book, actually. Right? Yeah. So you go. <laughs> Check book, it the first thing you okay. Exactly. So I think one of the things, one of the most important things, is identify your ideology. Mm -hmm. What to you is like a good political party? Okay. Like, what's your what's your perception about governance? Not the negatives. Like, what what is your ideal government system? What is that? 
In you all honesty, Nafisa, because mm -hmm. this thing you just said, it hit a very strong nerve. Hmm. Looking at the current crop of political parties, where would you say that there's a strong ideology? We don't actually really have a strong ideology. <laughs> That's the honest truth. But we have, to be honest, we have the younger ones that are copying mm -hmm. up, that are trying to imbibe some of these things, and we should give them credit because, you know, they are trying to do a really, really, they are trying a good thing, but it's a really, really hard job. Yeah. So I think it's best starting from there. And then another thing you should, then the next thing, once you identify your ideology, <laughs> get your voter's card. And then the third thing is obviously join a political party. But do not go and join a political mm -hmm. party that does not have any internal democracy. How easy is okay, it I to join a political party? You well, just some, say some, I parties, want to join your some parties party. are relatively easy. Like, for instance, Koa Party, you literally just go to the side, pay your 1K, join. Mm -hmm. Join one of the cell groups, and that's it. Okay. So, okay, what well, is I, embracing I think, technology okay. to make that very easy for you? That's quite okay. interesting. Well, mm -hmm. I, I think this is basically for people who are interested already. Mm -hmm. Now, for but people who are, are not, not interested, interested, I heard you talk about schools, but I would want you to expand on, like, expand more on mm -hmm. uh, strategies to get more youths involved. What about if you're not in school, if you're in the village, or if you're at the market, or what are other strategies we could use to get people involved in politics? In okay, so the relevance of you know youth participation. Mm -hmm. So you're basically saying that what should we do to get those that are not involved in? I'm sorry, that are not interested, in school, yeah. or yeah. not even in school, yeah. like successful. You know, you you, you successfully broke mm -hmm. it down for mm -hmm. the people that are already in school mm -hmm. put in, and put in their curriculum. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. we have a lot of children. The percentage of children that are out of school are mm -hmm. a lot, and they are on the streets and all of those. Are we things. talking How about awareness we, now? Yeah, yeah. No, she is talking about changing the narrative, mm -hmm. right? So how do we now get those people? How to yeah. attack them? Strategies. Yes. Strategies for those children that are... Okay, I get you. So there's this other, um, like, story I always use whenever I have this issue, that how do you reach people that are not empowered in any sense, literally yeah. suffering? Mm -hmm. So... When someone's hungry, so instance, maybe I come to you and I want to eat swallow, maybe pound a diam and ogbonon, because I'm a huge swallow person, <laughs> irrespective of the fact that I'm really small. So, and I'm really hungry, and I come to you telling me, oh, wow, um, okay, I'm going to show you how to plant the yam inside the soil, and then we're going to wait for that. By the yeah. time we're done, that will I not be dead? You'll be dead, though. Exactly. Mm. So you come to people that are hungry, you come to people that are not empowered, that they literally don't have anything. It will shock you how their mindset is. Because I know, because, you know, as you're growing up, you move from one stage to the other. And I know how important it is that your mind needs to be opened up to different possibilities that you might, you can be exposed to. So you come to that sort of person. That's why I also say that if you want to run for office, like the other speaker said, it's really mm -hmm. important. No, you don't, I don't, I'm not very, I'm not, I need to think about the whole, going back home thing like you mm. must run mm. but you do need to visit the grassroots and start from there awesome like helping people awesome. so you come to them the first thing you do so is you to need give to first of the first of all Take care of their stomach. Mm -hmm. Take care of the stomach and then feed them the gospel. Literally, mm -hmm. when mm -hmm. people wow. preach, when, it says, so, so preach. stomach infrastructure is still a strategy. No, look at the last election yeah, that happened in London. Yeah. Boris Johnson was going around with groceries. Yes. Yes. He didn't give money, he gave mm -hmm. food, but mm -hmm. <laughs> that's the honest truth. I bet he learned that from yeah. Nigeria. <laughs> you need oh, yeah. okay. okay. people's okay. needs before you. Thank yeah. you so much for coming wow. on the show. We learned so much and we had so much fun having mm -hmm. you on the show. So, so just summarize what mm -hmm. you said. Mm -hmm. um, when Sanze asked you like the question at first, she said mm -hmm. women are disadvantaged mm -hmm. of um, running for political office. Yeah. One last question before sure. we round up. Is it because of a mindset thing or a societal thing? I would say basically a mixture of the two and also financial empowerment because that's literally Women very, are dependent. Yeah, very, dependent. very important. Because they've been wired to be dependent on a man. Yeah, true. True, true, true. Why are they Growing up, they, they say finish school so that you get married. And then Do this one so that you get, get married. married. You know, so that's what everything it is. is husband house yes. for women. But the narrative is changing, it's changing. and I'm very yeah, proud changing. of that. Also, changing. another important thing that we learned mm -hmm. is that there's not enough civic education in yeah. the syllabus, so we need to incorporate that yes. in our syllabus. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you so you. much. And the final one, I love that part of identifying your ideology. Oh, steps mm -hmm. to get into key. politics. Yes, yeah. you must identify your ideology, mm -hmm. and you know, and because once your ideology you see mm -hmm. is a square peg, in a square you. You are like that. Yes. Yes. Thank you so much, Nafisa. I think we should you. bring you back.
please. We should bring the both of them back <laughs> on the show because, because we, we really cannot say. But, but the truth is, we've started a conversation. Yeah. Yes, we the have. goal for the show is not just to talk. Yeah, mm -hmm. definitely. It's to get somebody out there that mm -hmm. is, you know, to begin to think. Mm -hmm. Wake up. Because the truth is that people in government, people mm -hmm. in governance, they are the ones that are deciding the future, yeah. your future and the future of your children. Exactly. So if you don't get involved, then there's a big, there's a big problem. Yes, you mm -hmm. All right, thank you so much. We've, we've really had a very interesting thank show today. You thank you so me. much for coming. All right, so you can catch us live every weekend from Friday through to Sunday at 8 p.m. as we bring thought-provoking, engaging, and informative conversations to your screen. It's really been an insightful conversation, ladies. Absolutely. From Friday, yes. we talked about education. Yesterday, we talked about parenting. Today, we're Today, talking about parties. politics. And, I mean, so you need to watch, catch all our episodes on YouTube and follow us on Instagram, YouTube. Twitter. Follow us everywhere. We love you guys. We'll see you on Friday. <laughs>